There's no sugarcoating it. This was a bad weekend for coronavirus in this country. More than 100,000 new cases of COVID-19 were confirmed across the nation Saturday and Sunday. And according to the man we've been turning to for the facts for months, that's Dr. Anthony Fauci, it's not getting better anytime soon. We haven't even begun to see the end of it yet. I mean, it's still globally threatening. Of all the emerging infections that I've had to deal with, in the 36 years that I've been the director of the Institute, starting off from HIV in the early 80s with Ebola and Zika and anthrax attacks, this is clearly the most challenging. Dr. Fauci is continuing to speak out, even as the White House has been actively undermining him, even sending a list of all the times he's been wrong to the Washington Post. Of course, the White House denies it. But imagine if Fauci did that for the man in the Oval Office. But here are some facts no one can dispute. Coronavirus case numbers are growing in all but a handful of states at this point. Florida smashed the single-day record for any state with the more than 15,000 yesterday. And six hospitals in Miami-Dade County are at capacity. And still, Disney World is back open. And yes, it's limiting capacity and telling people to wear masks. But you know how they're enforcing that mask rule? You don't get a picture of yourself on a ride if you're not wearing one. Seriously. Maybe that's what got the president finally on board with wearing a mask in public for the first time over the weekend when he visited the Walter Reed Military Hospital, making this comment right before he headed in. I think it's a great thing to wear a mask. I've never been against masks, but I do believe they have a, a time and a place. Yeah, like any time you're around other people so you don't accidentally kill them. Here in Massachusetts, Boston is just entering phase three today of reopenings, with Mayor Marty Walsh standing by his slow pace. Listen, I'm basing the decisions that I make here on science, on data, and I'm listening to the experts. I'm not basing it on a whim or what I think is the right way to go. We've gotten some criticism here for not moving too fast, or not moving fast enough, I should say. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, most people understand and they, they come back to me. I've heard more than one time now people saying you were absolutely right from the very beginning in shutting everything down. You're very right in your cautious approach because their families are impacted by COVID-19. Now, at least one Massachusetts city has decided to go even slower than Boston when it comes to reopening. Somerville Mayor Joseph Curtitoni opted to push back phase three another week over concerns the state has not done enough. He wrote in Commonwealth Magazine, quote, what we're being handed is a hot mess. We've watched other states bungle their reopenings, and we seem to be following in their footsteps. We do not have the public health scaffolding in place to respond when, not if, the virus rebounds. We have not built a culture where everyone wears face coverings. We are treating schools like an afterthought in our reopening plans rather than the centerpiece they should be. Simply put, we continue to underestimate COVID-19. Now, that may seem extreme, but in Curtitoni's defense, another state that once seemed to have the virus under control just this afternoon announced it's reinstating many business closures. California Governor Gavin Newsom is once again closing indoor operations in restaurants, wineries, movie theaters, and bars statewide. And the hardest hit counties will also have to close fitness centers, places of worship, hair salons, malls, and many offices. I'm joined now by Somerville Mayor Joseph Curtitoni. Mr. Mayor, thanks so much for being with me. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Okay, so with Boston moving to phase one today, it seems to me the score is roughly 350 to one. 351, 350 cities and towns moving into phase three, and then there's Somerville. What do you know that other city and town leaders don't, Mr. Mayor? Well, first I would say it's more like 351 cities and towns left to do it on their own. Uh, when I mentioned we've been handed a hot mess because, you know, notwithstanding the good work we've done and the governor's administration on flattening out the curve, you know, we don't have a plan uh, around testing, contact tracing, uh, case tracking, uh, we're not nimble or we're not truly being vigilant and surveying um, what is happening on the ground so that we're prepared to deal, move strategically to intervene when there's an outbreak. What I know is the same that Mayor Walsh knows and so many else knows, that this virus isn't going away. And remember at the beginning of all this, a few months back, Jim, when the first cases landed, we heard about some one or two cases in California and we wondered when will it hit us or if it would hit us. Look what happened over the last four months. Now we see California rolling back 19 counties, and we see the disaster in the southeast and western part of this nation. We're going to get hit with a resurgence, and the question is, 
uh, is it going to be as bad or worse than the first surge? I hope it's not. But we are certainly not prepared to deal with this strategically and surgically to contain an outbreak. And what I know is what the science and health experts are telling us all along, that people are continuing to be sick, get sick, and continuing to die. And we're never going to get to the other side of this thing and really bolster up our economy and get back to the normal that we once knew until we all understand that clearly. So if the plan is inadequate, a state plan is inadequate, as you say, Mr. Mayor, I repeat, why did 350 other cities and towns, including Mayor Walsh in Boston, say, let's move ahead? Well, I'd submit that's not been the case. Uh, and we, we did not, certainly did not do that in phases one and two. And I'd ask you to look at some of them. We're the most densely populated city in New England, closer to downtown Boston than probably most of Boston. Very diverse city. A third of our city's foreign mm-hmm. born. We speak two languages. Yet our transmission rate is probably lower than the rest of the Commonwealth. Uh, you know, we moved, along with other cities and towns, moved ahead of the Commonwealth when the governor would have moved to institute uh, facial covering orders. We, along with dozens of municipalities and school districts at the beginning of this crisis, moved to closed schools when the governor and the administration said they no, did not want to. In fact, they were reticent on it. And we've instituted other orders, stay at home advisory ahead of the Commonwealth. Now, as they move to reopening, our focus is on preparing for a resurgence. I'd submit Mayor Walsh is saying the same thing, and that we have two guiding stars ensure the public health, safety, and well being of everyone in our community, and making sure that in any reopening, it is sustainable. Uh, we do not want to go back to what we experienced before, but the danger is we will. So it's not a question so what's of. Speci- so, Mr. Mayor, what specifically is Charlie Baker not done? quickly, if you can, that he should have done in your estimation? Well, first, I would say they have done a lot of good things around. And again, we flattened out the curve. We successfully worked together on that. And they did a lot of good things around reopening. There are some pieces of phase three we actually are doing. But again, you can't have a one size fits all, you know, for every city in town. I understand why the slow roll in the governor agreed to the slow roll in Boston. But again, look at where Somerville or Chelsea or Malden or Everett, Revere, Cambridge is situated. This is not a big metropolitan area. We're tightly integrated with one another. So what I would like to see a more uniform leader uh, approach from the from the governor's administration on having mass worn indoors and outdoors. All the experts are saying we should double down on those efforts now. I wish we did not roll back the contact tracing collaborative. How are we going to understand how this pandemic is changing? We can't flick a switch, as the governor's mentioned, we can hire the people back. We need to know where it is moving where the resurgence is occurring so we can contain it. And we are still not anywhere near we need to be in terms of testing in this Commonwealth. Right now, today, I will tell you, Jim, all our efforts in Somerville, and we were the first in the state to start testing asymptomatic people, they're going slower. They're going backwards. And now we're faced with the same situation we're at the beginning, a limited supply of testing support materials, reagents, um, swabs, and even kits. That is a concern to all of us right now because celebrating a reopening, and I know people have been cooped up. I want to get out. I want to do things with my family. But our focus should be on trying to get the schools open safely so those families can get back to work and truly bolster so our is, that, is, is the school, is, is your major concern, I want to understand, Mr. Mayor, is your major concern that allowing indoor activities now is going to jeopardize school openings come the fall? Is that your primary objection here? It's another layer on how we've sort of loosely handled the reopening. Uh, and I submit, we are not measuring. Well, we don't see, and, we, and I submit, we don't have a true real-time measure of the impacts of the reopening. When we open, we wanna see, are there, are there spikes? Are there outbreaks anywhere? How can we- The really positivity truly- rate, as you know, the positivity rate in testing has been below 2%, according to the governor, 94% below what it was in mid-April. That's pretty good progress, isn't it? And we had made good progress. We see that changing right now. And we're only, te- we know the positivity rate of who we're testing. But testing is now being, is slowing down in its terms of its capacity, going back to where it was towards the beginning. How are we going to know the real positivity rate? All the experts say you should multiply that by 10. Okay. And the positivity rate tells you a story of what happened two or three weeks ago. Still, we know this virus is with us. So even if the positivity rate is good or being successful, this is where you, I'd submit, where you double down on our efforts to make sure, you know what, maybe we can get back to school in a greater capacity than we thought. We can build up our economy better because this is not going away. What's happening in these other states is not going to stay away from us. It's coming our way. Right now, we're in the summer months in Massachusetts. Are there not people from some of these other states down the Cape, along the New England shorelines and our coastal towns? 
I mean, we're, we're touching one another here. So this virus, as one expert said to me, we should take it this way, assume we all have it until proven otherwise. And we don't have the luxury to be loose and fast and to just throw this on cities and towns, on our individual school districts and say, we have to figure it out based on these loose guidelines. This plan needs to be led. A plan needs to be commanded. It needs to be coordinated. It needs to be uniform. It is not on testing. Well, well, by the way, but my, I spoke today on the radio to the commissioner of primary and secondary education, Commissioner Riley, and he said every single school district, including yours, gets to send in a plan that fits the needs and problems in their community, and that'll be approved based on that. Isn't that exactly the kind of thing you're looking for? General guidelines and then specific approval or disapproval based upon the state of the virus and the state of readiness in Somerville, no? No, we're not looking for individual cities and towns to guarantee their own very form of approach to this. Yes, it is true. We have to, by the end of the month, submit one of three versions. All the kids back in kids back in school right. or some hybrid version. Right. I'd submit hybrid thing, them. yeah. It'll be in some hybrid version. Because every city and town is different. The other thing they did around schools was to put forth this standard where you can go down as far as three feet social distancing from another person. Yeah. That that's that makes no sense based on the social distance and we're telling people outdoors to undertake. And then every school district has a varied set of conditions on the physical plant that they're building. My high school which is under construction was built in eighteen ninety five. You know, you can, and not many high schools don't have the filtration systems necessary to keep their students safe. Right. We got to figure it out. And that I submit that is very complex. But just putting forth loose sets of guidelines or guidelines that we can pick and choose from as part of a toolbox is not a plan. It is not Mr. a plan. Mr. Mayor, I, I should say to you, uh, you know, in some ways I have sympathy. I'm on the coronavirus. If I were a leader, which thank goodness I am not, I'm a cautious kind of guy. Two, but you are planning to reopen a week from today. Is the plan no, going to be any better in seven days than it is today? What's going to change? Well, actually, let's, let me clarify that we're not reopening on the 20th. We will not open reopen before the 20th in terms of phase three. And like we did in phase oh, one, we, many of the personal service businesses like salons and so forth. And in phase two, restaurants and help them establish their outdoor seating. Likewise, here with those businesses that are mostly indoors that pose a high risk of transmission, fitness clubs, theaters, entertainment venues, we're going to work with those stakeholders. We're going to be diligent and deliberate. We're going to require a site safety plan be submitted. That doesn't mean they're going to open on 20th. And that doesn't mean they'll all open unless they can meet those requirements. This is part of our effort that's kept our transmission rate low. I want you to know I live 10 blocks from Somerville. So stay with it, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you.